welcome back to my channel today we did a cut crease on small hooded eyelids so if you want to see how I got this look keep on watching So I got a lot of feedback that you guys wanted to see me do a cut crease on somebody whose eye space was a little bit more limited. I got smaller eyes and hooded eyes. So um, this is my client. Her name is Shania. And I've done her makeup plenty of times. And as you can see, she has um, smaller eyes. And her eyelids are a bit hooded as well. So I thought she would be good for this tutorial. I'm just starting off by cleaning her face off with some witch hazel. This is the Thayer's witch hazel I'm just using to cleanse her face. And then I'm using the Denia Myrix Illuminating Veil on her neck and chest area just to give her a little glow. When my clients have their collarbones and shoulders out, I like to add some illuminator, illuminator to them because it just looks nice against the makeup. And I just wanted to show you guys that her brows are uneven before I start. I want you guys to see her right and her left brow are completely different. They are two different shapes. One is higher, one is lower, one is arched, one is rounded. So I just wanted to point that out before somebody says, her brows are uneven. Yeah, most people's brows are uneven before makeup. So, yeah. And I'm just using my um, Absolute New York pencil. Of course, the Slim Brow Pencil in the shade Smoke. And then I'm going to use my LA Girls Browy Wowy Pencil in the shade Chocolate. Um, just to fill in the top. I didn't want the brows to be so dark. Her, her brows are like already really, really full and really, really black. And I always use a lighter shade to fill in her brows, especially because her hair is usually always blonde. I like to just go in with a lighter brow pencil to kind of lighten up her brow. But her brows are already naturally dark, so yeah. And I'm starting by brushing the hairs up and across to see the natural shape and then I'm gonna draw a line on the bottom. I do very short strokes and then I'm gonna do hair like strokes throughout the brow. Now her brows are really full so I'm barely doing anything. There barely are any sparse areas. I'm just more so defining the shape and trying to even out her brows the best I can. Brows are Wait, what are brows? Brows are sisters, not twins, but they should never be cousins. So don't stress too much about brows and trying to get them so perfect and so even. Like, I, I don't stress about them. I get them as close as I can and then I keep on moving because I usually just don't have time. And I'm using the MAC Pro Longwear and NC42 and NC45. And I'm going to mix those two to highlight underneath her brow. I'm using my MAC and why do I always do that? I'm using my MAC 248 brush to outline the bottom of her brow. And then I'm going to outline the top. I'm using a darker shade on the top. I'm using a foundation um, mixed in with her concealer. Just so that it's a little bit closer to her skin tone on her forehead. Now I'm taking my BH Cosmetics brush in V5, which is a blending brush, and I'm going to use that to press the, um, the concealer in above her eyebrow and underneath her brow bone. Now we're gonna move on to the next brow. I'm doing the same thing on the other brow, starting on the bottom of her brow, using my brush to outline and define the shape on the bottom. And then I go on the top with a slightly darker shade. If 
you guys want to see a more detailed video of how I do brows, I'm going to link the last video I did down below. So her brows are complete. So I'm taking my P. Louise base in number three and I'm using that to apply it onto her lids. This is going to be the base for my eyeshadow. No, I do not set the base. You do not have to set the base. You want to tap it onto the skin. I'm going in with my tape from H&M, which is very thin. It does not irritate the skin. It saves me time. That's why I use a tape. You do not have to use a tape if you don't want to, but it saves me time. Now I'm going in with my Sugar Pill eyeshadow in purple. I will list every single thing down below, so don't worry. The exact shade will be down below. And I'm using my Sigma E40 brush. And I'm doing windshield wiping motions first. Just to get a, a color down. And then I'm going in with my Morphe, I think it's M433. And I'm going to directly apply that color in my crease. So I'm tapping and sweeping back and forth to kind of blow it out so that it's soft. But I still want it to be defined because I'm cutting my crease right underneath that purple color. Now I'm going in with uh, the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place and I'm going in with that orange. And I'm going right over that purple and I'm blending the two colors together. Now I'm going back in with the purple and I'm just going over where I put the orange. Because I, you know, you lose the first color when you blend in the second color. So I always go back and add the first color. And then I'm going in with the yellow on top of the orange. Yellow, orange, and purple just always looks nice together. So I just can never help myself. But it just, it looks so pretty together. So I just wanted to add a little bit of yellow to the edge of the orange to give a nice blend. Now I'm going back into the uh, Juvia's Place palette and I'm adding that pink color. It's kind of like a coral. And I'm going over my MAC, I believe this is the 217 brush. And I'm just adding that in between where the purple and orange was. Now I'm going back in with that purple. So I'm just layering my colors on you guys. You can do it as many times as you like, but you don't want to put too much pressure on your brush because then the colors will start to break up and it will get patchy. So you just want to be very light handed when you're going back and forth with these colors because you also don't want it to get muddy. And you also want to make sure you're using your different brushes. You aren't using the same brush to blend different colors. So every single brush that I used will be listed down below, but these are for the most part all Morphe brushes. I only used one Sigma brush and a MAC brush, but everything else is Morphe. And I'm going in with the P. Louise base and I'm using shade number two and this is what I'm going to use to cut her crease. I'm taking my MAC 252 brush. I'm going to go in and I'm going to tap that on her lid area because I want to get an idea of where I should cut her crease. Her eye space is limited. I had her open her eyes so I can see. 
And now I'm going in where I want to cut her crease with the brush. I'm just lightly tapping, going very slow because I don't want to go too high because then it's going to just look off because her eyes are so small. Okay, so once again, I'm tapping the brush along where I want the crease to be cut. I'm really just following that purple shade in the shape of her eyeball to determine where I'm gonna cut the crease. So when your client's eyes are closed, you can really see, you know, where their eyes crease naturally. And I just tend to follow that. Or if I need to really see better, I'll have the client open their eyes like I just showed you. So I'm really taking my time with this 252 brush and just, you know, tapping along where I want the crease to be cut. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself to be too fast with this. I know sometimes you feel like it takes too long, but take your time to get it right. And, you know, the more cut creases you do, the faster you will become. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my smaller brush. This is the 248 from MAC. And I'm just sharpening out. It was already pretty sharp. This eye came out better than the other eye for some reason. It was already pretty sharp, but I'm just going in with the smaller brush just to get more of a detail on it. Usually, one eye will come out slightly different than the other or just slightly better than the other. And don't stress yourself if you have to go ahead and wipe the other eye off. It happens. Nobody's perfect. But if it's only a slight difference, I just leave it alone. Because in the end, it's not going to be that noticeable. Unless they're completely two different shapes, it's not going to be that noticeable. So now I'm just taking a brush. I didn't dip any extra product. I'm just bringing the shadow that's already on her eyelid. And I'm dragging it in. To get a gradient blend and then once i do that then i'm gonna go in with some eyeshadow this is the same purple shade and i'm going to bring that into her eyelid now i'm going back in with that pink coral shade from juvia's place and blending that in with the purple kind of like tapping and sweeping at the same time Tapping the color in to get the payoff and then sweeping to get that gradient blend. So now I'm going back into the purple because I lost a little bit when I put the pink on and I'm just blending those colors both together. I want to see the purple and I want to see the pink. Now I'm going back into Juvia's place with that peachy shade and then I'm going into the Makeup Forever palette. It's really old with this really white gold shade. And I'm going to use the Juvia's Place peachy color on the center of her lid. And then the white gold is going to be her inner corner color. So I'm using another, this is a clean 252 brush. And I'm using that to apply the color onto her lid and up into her crease. So I'm just pressing that color in. No, I do not wet the shadows or wet the brush. The brush is completely dry and it's clean. And now I'm gonna take my smaller brush and this is a different 248 brush that's clean as well. And I'm gonna use that to apply the white gold in her inner corners. And I'm just tapping that in and tapping the two colors into each other. So now I'm going to take some more of that pink because it's more prominent on the other eye and I'm going to just um, tap that color in so that you can see it more and then add more of the purple.
Now I'm taking um, Peach's Makeup Pigments and the eye glue and I'm adding Hollywood in the inner corner and Bollywood in the center. I'm using my Sephora eyeliner. Um, I don't put eyeliner on with tape. I just, I don't like how it comes out with tape. I kind of freehand it. But if you are a beginner, I would recommend leaving the tape on to do your eyeliner. It might be a little bit easier for you, but I just simply drag the eyeliner on. I put the lash on first and I depend on the eyelash band to get me a straight line. I will do a more detailed video on how I do eyeliner but it was kind of hard for me to get the camera angle, you know, right. All right, so we're done with the eyes and we're gonna move on to the face. I'm using my First Aid Beauty Repair Cream to moisturize her skin. And I'm using my Quarterly Beauty Elixir and I'm gonna spray that all over. If you are a makeup artist or you do makeup on yourself, you definitely need to invest in this spray. It's amazing. It's wonderful. If you've been following me for a while, then you know, like, I love this spray. Now I'm going in with my Milk of Magnesia. Yes, I said Milk of Magnesia. I use the Philips brand. I use the Gentle Kind. This is how I apply it. This is how I recommend you apply it with a brush. Very thin, thin layer. A very, very thin layer. And now I'm using my MAC um, Feline, I believe it's called, eye pencil. And then I'm going in with the P. Louise base again underneath her eye because we're going to be adding some color down there and I want it to be very strong and pigmented. If your client has watery eyes, always do this step before foundation. I'm going in with one of the Jaclyn Hill Vault palettes and I'm using this, this really dark um, purplish color and then I'm gonna blend it out with kind of like a I don't even know like a purplish burgundy color I just want it to be very smoky on the bottom now I'm going into the Julia's masquerade palette and I'm using this blue color and I'm gonna pop that right on the bottom of her inner corner you're using MAC NC55 on her face, and then we're using NARS Taiho Foundation in the center of her face. I always use two to three foundations to get the client's perfect color. I never just use one foundation color unless that's their color. To blend out her foundation, I'm using the Instapot brush by Real Techniques and I'm tapping that product into her skin. I'm starting with the jawline first and then moving on to the center of her face. For concealer, we're using the same two shades um, that we used under her eyebrows. I'm starting with NC45 all over underneath her eye, on her forehead, down her nose, and her chin. And then I'm going to take... A little bit of the NC42 just directly underneath her eye very little now I'm using the smaller instapot brush to blend out the outside edges of her concealer and blending that into her foundation so everything is nice and seamless I do want to add that off camera um, while I was recharging my battery I did add a darker foundation around her forehead and around the hollows of her cheeks to give her depth and color so now we're done blending out the concealer this is what it looks like and I'm gonna go in with my Sasha buttercup cosmetics powder and I'm going to use that to press it into her under eye, I am using a wet, damp beauty blender sponge that has no product on it, and I'm using that to press the powder into her skin.
Then I'm going in with my Luscious by Lynn No Shine Powder, and I'm going to use that to highlight underneath her eyes. So I used the Sasha Buttercup to set the concealer, and now I'm using the Luscious by Lynn No Shine color to highlight and bake underneath her eyes. Now to add a little bit more color and depth into her skin, I'm going in with the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Powder in Deep Dark. I'm using that as a bronzer along her cheeks and on her forehead. Now I'm taking her foundation brush and I am pressing that powder into her skin. This is the brush I use to apply her foundation. Now I'm just going back in and adding any color that I lost on the bottom of her eye. So this is what it's looking like so far. This is before mascara, FYI. And we're going to go in with some highlights. I'm using my Milani, of course. My favorite highlighter. She likes a lot of highlighters, so I just, I, I, I used a little bit more than usual. And you know, I know her and I know how she likes her makeup and she likes her highlight to be popping. And this highlight brush is one of my favorites. It's Morphe. It's really amazing. I love this brush. It's one of the best brushes for highlighting. Now I'm going to wear my Skinny Kit Cosmetics, of course, and I'm going to use that on top for a little bit of pop. I was going to use um, something else, but I, I really wanted this really gold color. Like, this is a great gold highlighter, so I just decided to use this. And I'm using that same highlighter in her inner corners, just a little bit. And I'm also going to use it underneath her brow bone. Now I'm taking the e.l.f. brow gel and I'm going to use that to brush any sparse hairs into place. Her brows are really, you know, full and bushy, so this really helps to get all of the brows, the brow hairs in place or whatever. Now I'm using chestnut to line her lips. I actually mixed a uh, chestnut and cork together and we just went with like a subtle lip because the eyes were so dramatic. And this is the finished look. How do you guys like this look? Let me know in the comments down below. I took this um, on my phone. This is with the box lights turned on and just the ring lights. And then this is just in natural lighting in my hallway. The light is coming in through the window in my bathroom. This is what it looks like, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up, please. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. And keep on watching to the end because I do have a giveaway going on right now on my Instagram page. So it'll be in the last slide. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.